Listen, O oh humans of this present world. Listen as a sparrow listens for her lover's call on the breeze. We are speaking to you in your dreams, in snatches of song heard in passing, from the mouths of children, from these pages. But more than this, we are speaking to you from the center of your innermost being. Hear us and remember yourselves. We return to human consciousness, bringing a time of new creation and the information required for humans to understand the changing conditions of the age. We are here to merge, to blend with your human egos, to help your race become the central guidance system of a vast new being. We are here to help the Great Spirit incarnate in the peoples of the four races. We have come to initiate a more joyous age this earth has ever known. A thousand years period of earth healing and renewed harmony that will see the four-leggeds flourish, the two-leggeds awaken, the rivers run pure and hum humankind in conscious exchange with the stars. And after this millennium has in turning season passed, you, a new being of translucent biology, will depart for the vast uncharted ocean of the Milky Way to give the freedom of the Thunderbird's flight as a gift to every star and every world. In a multiplication of love affairs that will go on until the end of time, you and your race will seed the galaxies with intelligent biological life. The potential of this universe is limitless. Her revelations of potential are infinite beyond number. But there are no star wars or advanced and fearsome civilizations beyond your own, because if civilizations are fearsome, they do not advance beyond your own. They become extinct, to rise up in the so soils of another world, a little wiser, until they learn. Our task today is to help you remove the blinders that historically have distorted your perception. Realize that what you feel in your heart determines what you see. Perception rides upon the expressions of the heart like a canoe rides upon the waters. When your heart expresses fear in any of its turbulent forms, your understanding becomes jumbled, confused. You perceive through the waves of illusion. But when you love, you understand, for then you share the vision, the very perception of God. Return like the salmon to the place of your origin. Birth your moments only in love. You can root your life in fear and know the predictability of granite, the strength of marble, and what security there is in limestone's patient changing. Or you can root your life in love and join us in helping to ease the human world through the awesome changes of these times. The great day of purification has begun, a short but essential cycle of division that will gather those who promote fear and violence and separate them from this season of the world as shaft is separated from wheat at thrashing. During these next two and a half decades, humankind will experience this separation transformation in human consciousness more fundamental than the development of language, more significant than the shift to agriculture, more meaningful than any historical revolution a new era is dawning. As the sun rises, the shadows become sharper and more clearly defined. As the energies of love grow stronger, the shadows of fear become more visible than before. To some it may even appear that they have grown in number and in strength, but this is not so. What was hidden has simply become revealed, that it might be healed and brought to peace. Action born from fear is becoming less effective with each passing day. Institutions, traditions, and societies forged in fear have already begun to falter. Change is occurring everywhere, for as the planetary awakening proceeds, the consciousness that determines the quality and nature of life is itself changing. Amidst all these changing, more and more people are turning to God for guidance and direction. They are coming to dwell in the place of their own inner spirits and to recognize their spirits as expressions of God. That is where God asks to be trusted in the human heart. That is where the awakening takes place. 
The Creator asks not to be worshipped in an external image, but to be acknowledged in each human being. You are all God beings in potential, with no reason not to become God beings in reality. Trust yourself. Trust your natural response to each new situation. The action arising from within your heart is not going to be destructive. It is going to suggest the most creative path to walk in answer to your situation and your world. When you trust yourself, you are trusting in the wisdom that designed you. This is how you trust in God. It is not an abstract thing. Trust in God is trusting in the God who lives within you, trusting in your spirit's ability to respond to each situation beautifully, impeccably, individually, creatively. When you doubt your native ability to breathe the air of spirit into your world and create according to your divine thought, you are doubting both God and the universe. You are rejecting life's most precious gift to you, your own inner knowing and you are presuming to replace it with values and judgments and opinions you have acquired second-hand. Without the acquisition of another skill, without the acquisition of anything, but complete and total trust in God and in yourself, you have everything you need to interact optimally, creatively, and productively with every situation you encounter. There is no exception. Perhaps as much as 70 to 80% of your current typical behavior is exactly what you would do in a fully awakened state. Accept yourself. Feel clear about all you do. As you do this, you begin to introduce into your actions the very power of the Creator. There is a movement of spirit that proceeds from within your heart to greet the world with the clarity of perfect action. That movement is intuitive. It is your direct link with the source of all life. In the instant you know what to do, and in the same instance you flow into the perfect action required. Trust your intuition. It is an era whose shaft has been carved straight and smooth, unerring and true. It flies to its mark. Can the ponderous tread of the rational mind be compared to the swift, sure flight of an arrow? Reason is designed to support, not to lead your action. It is meant to help you implement the purposes of your heart. It is not meant to determine them. Trust in God by honoring and trusting your intuitive sense. No God would create a creature without the wisdom to chart its course. Trust the nature of your design. God's actions appear within your awareness as the most natural thing for you to do. Following them will reconnect you with the awesome powers of the universe for all your actions will then be in harmony with the underlying intent of the life force itself. The incarnational process is a process of relaxation. It is a process of relaxing all thinking that is born from straining and holding on. It is a process of choosing not to struggle against the current of what comes to you through the natural movement of your heart. This does not mean that you close your eyes to the world around you and try to think only good thoughts. No, you can look at the hunger in Africa and do something about it. You can look at the need for greater communication between nations and do something about it. You can perceive needs in any area and take action, motivated by love, to alleviate the suffering in that area. But though they may encounter problem areas, when your thoughts spring from intuition... They are not sustained through tension, anxiety, or fear. They are characterized by God's love flowing like powerful energy through your understanding. Happy knowing that you are there, grateful because you know you can make a difference. Invite the bird tribes into your awareness. Make a home for eternal spirit in your heart. Notice what thoughts create tension or anxiety and choose to release them. To the degree that anxiety taints your motivation, to that same degree you are less effective in all you do, for spirit is then denied access to your mind and heart, and you, in a literal sense, are not fully present. 